explain it in great detail, then some people will grasp it straight away. Others will have to go, right, needle, yeah, needle, ring, uh, diamond, small, ah, right, and then they get it. No, no, that's, yeah, no, that's, that's exactly what it is. It's like, it's the, um, what do I want to say here? It's the KISS philosophy. Keep it simple, stupid. If you explain it to something, if you explain something to someone in a way that they can understand, then they know it, then they pretty much can pick it up right away. Yeah, precisely. So, so again, you know, the, the videos and the tutorials I do are for the beginner. Are for the beginner. And, you know, um, if I can get people from stage, you know, say, I don't know, the likes of Carl Cox's stage number 10, and I start people at stage one. If I can get them from stage one to, say, stage three, I'm happy then, because quite often it's, it's almost like lighting a fire. You know, if you light a fire and leave it, it could go out. Right. But if you light a fire and tender it and blow it and nurture it, eventually it will take hold and it will just explode all by itself. And this is what's happening. Right. You've, you've, your little nest egg has blossomed into probably one of the biggest phenomenons so far. So, but I definitely, I definitely like all this. I uh, wanted to move on to something else now. Um, I guess basically the question is now for the guys that are going to be watching this from our uh, Disc Jockey Association. Um, you, you and I are basically, I'm, I've been paying attention to you and Brian when you're talking about things like LED lighting and um, you know the, some of the different stuff you're doing out there. Um, yes. What's your take on where you think? Do you think eventually everything's going to go LED? Um, well, you see, but Brian and I are very lucky because you know we do get a lot of the LED lights from these companies. Um, the one thing I'm finding is they're very similar. In other words, you've got a light from, say, American, or American Audio, sorry, American DJ, and it's DMX. You've got red, green, blue, and white lights, or, sorry, LEDs, and it flashes in a certain way, and it, it, it's okay. It's a nice unit. And then you have another light from another company with red, green, blue, and white LEDs, different shape different style, but if you look at a lot of LED lights, they're very generic. The colors are the same, the patterns are the same. So I feel that the company who will win the rep become the best one at selling LEDs is the company that can almost look behind or in front of what's happening and try and take it not one step further, but 10 steps further. So, um, so, go on. so basically give us so basically give us like for example um, the club that I work at okay the one down here in Pittsburgh it's 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 massive I mean it's it's four nightclubs in one pretty much yeah so they use all Martin lighting and these are like we're talking like the yeah. MX fours you know the old scanners uh, what yeah. was it the MX moving head series and they're just worn out they all they, and they're all the old incandescent type. I would almost wager a guess that eventually it's going to be Martin that comes up with the LED light that goes 10 steps ahead of everybody else. Yeah, but po possibly. Uh, uh, I, I know uh, I've got two of them, the LED sparkles from uh, American DJ, mm -hmm. and they're, they're three watt LEDs, and there's only one. Yeah, only one. Of them. But that's it, one LED, but they're very, very, very bright exceedingly bright and you know like a huge like you're talking about a huge club I could picture um, you know one of those in each corner of the room shining into the center of the dance floor with some smoke in the room and that would be an effect in itself that would be a very very cool effect oh yeah no doubt so, you know I, I, I think initially um, a nightclub would um, it would be a good idea for a nightclub to get some LED lighting, but definitely not just LED at the moment. I don't think they're good enough for big nightclubs yet. No, so, it, because that's the you, that's you, the general that's the general consensus as well. I mean, I've talked to pretty much everybody inside of this place, and they're all involved in the nightclub <laughs> the nightclub scene. Yeah. And they've even told me that right now they wouldn't use any LED lights. I mean, they would, but they would only use them if they were made by, like, you know, if they were Martin quality or something like that. Or if, like you yeah. said, if they're all, um, you know, if you can't really tell the difference. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and again, you see, if you think about it, you know, 
30 years ago, uh, a mobile DJ had foul lights, which were basically, sometimes they were just light bulbs painted, okay? Right. You know, but slowly right. everything progressed. Uh, I mean, one light that is exceptionally good um, is the Optikinetic um, oil wheel, or the Optikinetic Solar 250. I've seen that okay. light. I've seen that light. I saw it in your lounge session where you did the, uh, did those three tracks. Um, you used Orlando, Orlando Johnson, Chocolate City, uh, yeah. Fat Back Band, and After Seven, I believe. Can't stop, yeah. Yeah. And that's it. Oil, oil wheel. You see, the thing is with the, not necessarily the oil wheel, but the Optikinetic Solar 250, there is so much you can do with that because you can fit oil wheels, you can fit gobos, you can fit um, different lens, and potentially that you know the different ways of using that light is amazing. Yeah, I know that's so, that's a multi. It's a multifaceted light. So yeah, sure, and uh, and again also um, one light lighting unit that I do love at the moment is. Um, the cam laser light cluster, the 3D unit. I know, bro. I know. I love, I love that light. I saw the review you did on it with and without fog. It looks awesome. I really wish Cam would sell those here in the States because right now the only thing we have is, I did a video review on it a little while ago, is the uh, Chave Scorpion Storm uh, G. It's the green one. And okay. right after I purchased it, they actually started making an RG version. They have a red and green. And it basically does the same thing that the old Star Cluster did, the one that you originally showed us and the one that Brian has. It does yeah. the same thing. It gives off the same effect. As a matter of fact, I have video of it um, with fog. That effect looks, it literally looks like a ball of light just shooting That's out right. in front of it. Yeah, yeah. And that thing, uh, the first time we used it, it's kind of funny, but the first time we used it, me and one of my partner DJs, we used it at a rave, and yeah. once we had that place filled up with smoke, that star cluster, that cluster thing, that caught everybody's attention. I mean, as soon as they walked in the door, the first thing they noticed was this green star cluster. And they were yeah. like, they walk in, they're like, holy crap! You know, literally, people would walk in, and you you could, I wish I had gotten some of the reactions, but it was so pitch black, you couldn't see anything. <laughs> But yeah, like yeah. people, people were walking in and taking two steps back because they're seeing this like it looks like a star in the front that's of the room. Right, it does, yeah. So yeah, that, that's it. But I really like, okay, good. Go on, sorry, go on. No, what I was gonna say is I really wish I, having seen what the Cam 3D cluster does, I I still wonder to this day why Cam will not sell that here in the states. Yeah, I I think it's it's a lot to do with politics and and again. I think the way the states works, um, I'm not saying they do, but maybe it's difficult for a foreign company to come into the states when you have got businesses over there doing the same thing. Right. Well, I, I mean, see, that's the thing, though. Competition, but doesn't competition breed? You know, it breeds. What do you want? What do you want to call it? Competition breeds. I I know, I, I know what you mean. I, I can't think of the right thing. Yeah, me neither. I, I know exactly where you're coming from, but, but then again, maybe you need to look above that and just maybe think that there are certain fat cats out there that just say, no, we don't. Want, we want the monopoly and we just want to be in charge. Leave it. Because, right. of course, you know, if you've got 100 people buying lights and they, they've got those 100 people, they're not going to want to give 50 away. So... This is it, you know. Yeah, you just got to deal with what you got. But I mean, either way, it's just that, and I think that also leads into the next thing. Is one of the one of the other discussions that the DJAWP is running right now is we're all trying to talk about music markets that we haven't tapped yet. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, for example, one of the things that strikes me about like the UK and the rest of Europe is, for example, um, I'm trying to think where I saw this, but. Somebody had a video posted on YouTube, and I want to say it might have been, you know, a farmer from England. And yeah. he, w he had the radio on in his tractor. And, you know, this is the only place that I could see where you could have Kanye West's flashing lights playing and then immediately hear the freaks, uh, you know, the creeps afterwards. Hear it right after. <laughs> Here in America, that wouldn't fly. It would be Kanye West into some other, you know, hip-hop or emo or political rock music track or Disney pop black yeah yeah <laughs> I mean it, it's just I always I, I maintain it for a long time and I actually uh, before we actually ever really talked I used to do a, a webcast radio show uh, when I was in uh, college and I mentioned a couple times on the air that I thought uh, the EU and the UK 
they got pop music right, whereas we got it wrong here in America.